Welcome back to Tiny Grimes Games, and now I'm here with another Flesh and Blood video. And today what I'm looking to do is sort of dispel the rumor that I think is this out there, that Flesh and Blood is an astronomically expensive game. If you go to Channel Fireball, for instance, you'll see $1,000 cards. And if you go to FabDB, which is the deck builder, you'll see massive prices for decks, sometimes in the multiple thousands. But what these prices are generally showing are like the alpha print, super rare versions of cards. Uh, so if you end up building a deck now with the product that is more readily available now that the unlimited version is out of these cards, uh, the prices are a lot cheaper. And in fact, today I'm going to bring you all a budget warrior list that is quite competitive and is actually under $10. I don't know the exact price. I counted all the commons as about 20 cents. They're probably a bit cheaper than that. But let's go ahead and get into what this list is trying to do. This list is essentially very similar to sort of the standard warrior list that's trying to do a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is you have a whole bunch of cards that give you go again. So that when you're attacking with your uh, Dawnblade, let's go ahead and zoom in on our uh, Dawnblade and Dorinthia. Uh, so when you go ahead and attack with your Dawnblade over here, you get an opportunity to attack again. Uh, then there are cards that, that go basically over the top that are attack reactions that are quite strong. So you swing with your Dawnblade for three, and you leave your opponent with this really impossible decision. Do I block the Dawnblade for three, knowing that if I block for three, they're just going to go over the top and get the hit anyway. And for all those cards that say, on hit, go again... You're going to get to go again. Uh, and then if I block for, say, like, nine to stop them, they just sort of laugh and are like, okay, fine. You, pit, you put a whole bunch of cards in to block me. That was totally unnecessary. And especially if I had go again, then I'll just play one of my other attack cards that aren't reliant on the weapon. So you have these three sort of pools of cards that you're drawing from. You're drawing from the pre-attack cards, the attack reactions, and then the actual attack actions that allow you to do go-agains if they end up blocking your Dawn Blade. Because uh, what Dorinthia says is, when your weapon attack hits, you can attack an additional time. So if you don't hit with the Dawn Blade, if they overblock, Dawn Blade can't attack again, but that's okay. You have other attacks. All right, so what makes this list quite a bit cheaper than, say, a standard list? The big one is the equipment. And I, there's just no way around this. The equipment is substandard compared to the equipment you're going to see in a standard list. What I've ended up going with are like the really basic, just one damage prevention, helmet, chest, and uh, gauntlets. The boots are the typical warrior boots, and they're really important, so it's great that we get those. Uh, and then it's the null rune pieces, which can you know, uh, combat against uh, the wizard decks, uh, the rune blade decks. So they are in there basically for those decks, but most of the time you're going to be running the, the just generic iron rot garbage equipment. So that's what we get. This is the downside of the budget deck. You're essentially a couple health short compared to the regular uh, warrior deck, and then you don't have that great chess piece in either um, the tunic or the courage. Uh, both of those tunics help a lot. Let's go ahead and take a look at what are the cards we're working with here? So the first thing I want to look at are the uh, pre-attack cards. There are a whole bunch of important ones in the deck. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. We have uh, here the Warrior's Valor Trilogy. Like This card is just really good. A standard Warrior deck might not run all six of them, but each of them says something similar, which is if this, hit, if this hits, the attack gains go again. So in other words, you're able to play this before you even attack, you're either going to get one, two, or three bonus attack based on the value you play, which means your Dawnblade is attacking for four, five, or six, and if it hits it as go again, freaks your opponent out. They basically have to block that. We also have Sharpened Steel, which is super strong. Zero cost. Just dump it down. You get three attack. Now Dawnblade's attacking for six. And like I said, your opponent's stuck in the spot. If it's already six, if they try to block and then take into account the fact that you can play an attack reaction. They have to block for nine? That's absurd. Possibly the strongest card is Iron Song Determination. It's not a common. It's a super rare. But it's not a very expensive one. Uh, and it's just too good 
not to include if it's only going to up the price, you know, like a dollar total for the two, something like that. Um, it's a very strong card that says that your weapon gets plus one attack and dominate until the end of the turn. So this means if you hit with your Dawn Blade, um, which is basically a four because it's plus one, you're going to get to do this again with Dominate. And Dominate says they only get to block with one card. So let's say they're like, this is the turn. I am over blocking. I'm sick of this annoying warrior. And then you play this first and you're like, attack for four. And they're like, oh my goodness. I can only attack with one card. It's three. I can throw in this equipment for two more and over block to five. And then you're just like, whomp, attack reaction. I hit. I have go again because not only did I play Iron Song Determination, I also played a Warrior's Valor. Now I get to swing again with my weapon and it's four again and dominate again. So this is a great way to push through some damage. Uh, hit and Run is another great card, much like Warrior's Valor, uh, except for it's free and you automatically get go again, which is really strong. So it's not just if you hit, you just get go again. So in many ways, um, while Hit and Run is not giving you the attack bonus, oftentimes I like Hit and Run better. Uh, it's definitely a question of should we just have all six Hit and Runs, and the answer may simply be yes. Uh, and the reason is that you want your weapon to have go again, because like we said, even if it fails, right, and it doesn't hit, and now you can't play uh, Dawnblade again, we'll go over to the next series of cards, which is the attack cards. Uh, so let's let's say it goes poorly, and now you still have eight attack cards that basically are just lay down a card attack. So they're able to block that first attack. It doesn't hit, but it has go again, and then you play Flock for five damage or Flock for four damage and get a Quicken token, by the way, which is going to give you a go again next turn to be able to do the exact same thing. I put Scar for a Scar in here which the red one is really strong. It costs zero and it's four. The yellow one's not nearly as strong because it's zero and only attacks for three. And I'll do a video later about the difference between three and four and how astronomical it is. Three means they can one for one block you. Four means they have to two for one if they don't want to take any damage. So it's a pretty big difference. Um, I really like Scar for a Scar, especially with the way I play this deck, which is I will definitely be lower on health as I'm often taking damage to try to um, have a really impactful turn myself. Okay, so in case you were wondering, all right, I see all this stuff go again if hit. I'm not going to hit. My damage is only three or four, but we keep talking about going over the top with reactions, so let's take a look, and there are a lot of them. Um, so here is our reaction pile. We have two of each of these of... Uh, We'll start with Razor Reflex, which is a really strong card. It's just straight up for one, you're plus three. Um, what's interesting, though, is if you play something like Flock, it's plus three and go again. And that is, that can be a huge blowout because Flock is one of those cards where your opponent is not thinking you're getting go again. It does not have go again on it. This is the only card in the list that would give it go again. So it can be a really shocking moment when you're just like, Razor Reflex. Uh, Out for Blood is a very similar card. One cost gives your opponent gives your weapon another plus three, and then it also has this thing: if the defending hero is defended with a card, uh, I get the next attack. It's plus one. That's that's much less relevant. It is certainly relevant at times, but it's really just the plus three. So in order to stop you, they have to overblock. Iron Song Response is one of the most difficult cards to play around because if you look, most of these cost one, uh, but Iron Song is free to do three and there are so many times when your opponent has they have to figure out when to take the chance of taking the hit and taking their own window and quite often it's when you have no no resources floating one card in hand they do the math right and they're like okay there are 26 cards in the deck they haven't played an iron song but the odds are low they have one and you're like yeah the odds are so low and then you're like bomb iron song Weapon hits, I get the counter on Dawn Blade. Next turn, it's swinging for four instead of three. It's a super strong card. Iron Song Response at uh, only one is not that strong. I rarely play it for its actual attack value, but sometimes you do. Sometimes they just exact these attack because if it's 
a three attack and blocks are three, a lot of times people don't want to overblock, and even just this plus one will be enough to get that hit. And then when it's not, I often just pitch it. It's three resources. It's, it's really good. And the yellow is the in-betweener. Two is still good, either for resources or the surprise. Stroke of Foresight is another really strong card. It fits in the Razor Reflex out for blood territory. It costs one, um, but it does give you plus three. And then if your opponent has defended with a card, uh, you get to do a little filtering, right? You draw a card, you put, put either you know one of your cards in hand on the top or bottom of your deck, which is, can be quite powerful. And then overpower is like this weird wild card thing where I very, very rarely play it for its actual ability. I'm pretty much just pitching it for three resources. But if you get in a pinch and you have three, you know, you can give your weapon attack plus two. Um, and then if they did defend, you get another two. So it can be a really good way to push through. But I would say we're looking at both overpower and Iron Song response as pitch three cards that give you that little bit of flexibility where you get in a pinch and you're like, you know what? I can actually use this to put the push the damage through. And it's what I love about this deck so much is that it gives you so much flexibility and not just gives you flexibility, but it lets your opponent know, I've got a lot of flexibility. What are you going to do about this? And that can be very challenging indeed. Uh, the last section of cards we should look at are Sort of the wild card miscellaneous cards. Uh, we've got our two defensive steel blade shunts in here. Um, they do block for a lot in four, but I hate them. Like I am in blitz, I very rarely use them to block because it costs you two cards to block then. And that's just to me, not all that viable. It's basically a pitch three that maybe I get in a pinch and block. Sink below. Very similar. I rarely use it to block. I could see some moments, though, where if my hand is really awkward for that next turn, it's a decent way to sort of try to fix that a little bit. Um, and it's just a pitch three. Sigil of Solace. This is one of those cards that's in every single Blitz deck that I've seen, at least for Warrior. And I don't love it, but because we're more limited in options because it's Blitz, I use it here. But in my regular Blitz deck, I don't. But it's pretty strong. Yes, it's defense zero. And yes, it's only pitch one. But it's just straight up three health gain, which can be really strong. I've had people blow me out in a huge way with this, where they like stick it in their arsenal. And then I do my attack, and I'm like, ooh, I'm going to go over the top and win. And they're like, oh, no, you win. And then, then they're just like, whoop, Sigil of Solace, I gain three. You take me to one. Now I crack back and um, try to steal the game. So, uh, and in fact, I, I did lose once to that exact scenario. And it was streaming and it was quite interesting because I was like, oh, I've got this. I can't believe they let them go to one. I played Steel Blade Shunt, which by the way, we didn't talk about one of the coolest things about it. When it defends a weapon, it deals a damage, just like an auto damage. So they went to one, I Steel Blade Shunted them, threw my hands up in victory and then they went sigil out of the arsenal with no cards in hand and that was a sad moment <laughs> for me um but that was fun anyway so that is the list this is my uh warrior blitz budget build basically what we're doing is what the regular uh warrior list is trying to do which is go ahead and put your opponent on the back foot as they try to parse out, what are you going to do, right? You're attacking with the Dawn Blade. You're giving it go again. You're playing all these pre-attack actions that, that do effective things. You have the opportunity to go over the top with your attack reactions. And then even if they repel your Dawn Blade, if it has go again, you have all these um, great events to keep, keep pushing the damage through. I will say it's missing some utterly critical cards. Big one, if you've been playing long, Enlightened Strike. That is an expensive card. It is a very, very strong card. So it's just one of those things to build towards. Um, I opened one box of Cruc of uh, not Cruc of, of Welcome to Wrath, and I got an Enlightened Strike, and that was really exciting. I was like, yes, I now have one Enlightened Strike in my deck. So when I build my real life deck, it will be this. It'll be very close to this exact list. 
plus one enlightened strike. So something to build towards. Um, I'll put out a future video with my current build of Warrior Blitz in it as something to build towards. But this is a great list that's competitive. It's under $10. Uh, I played a game already on TTS with it and recorded it. And, and ooh, I won't spoil the game, but I won't. We'll just say it was competitive. Uh, and I'll go ahead and release that video as well. Uh, my uh, FabDB link will be below for this. And uh, yeah, give it a try. Let me know what you think. 10 bucks to play a new game that's super fun. That's hard to resist. Uh, anytime a, de a game is, is almost free, which by the way it is right now on Tabletop Simulator if you're not able to go in person and play. But even if you can play in person, 10 bucks. I think I think if you're a card game player, you've probably spent a lot more than $10, not on a deck, but on a card. Uh, so hopefully this will help you out, and I'll see you next time on Tiny Grimes Games.